actual video today, I'd just like to say that an early access copy of my book, Hello Swift iOS App Programming for Kids and Other Beginners, has been released. You can find it on many bookstores online, such as Amazon, Chapters, and Indigo, as well as the publisher's website. I really do hope it helps you along your journey of learning the Swift programming language for iOS development. Alright, so let's get into the tutorial now. So, hello there, and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tammy Bakshi, and this time we're going to be going over asynchronous tasks in a variety of different programming languages. In fact, just before I actually go over what we're going to be talking about today, I'd like to say a big thank you to Prashant Chaudhry, uh, who is a medical engineering student in Germany, for sending in this question uh, and, of course, giving me the idea for this video. So, basically, I'm going to be ta talking to you about today, well, quite a short video, uh, but basically, it's going to be about how you can use asynchronous tasks, what they are, and why you use them. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about that. So let's actually begin with uh, something like Watson. Okay, If you've ever used IBM Watson or Google or really any REST API, any REST API, you've probably used asynchronous tasks. And basically um, what this means is let's say you've got the internet. Okay, So you've got this thing called the internet. It's really big. Okay. And you've got this thing called, let's just say, a, a connection to the internet. Okay, so you've got this connection to the internet. Uh, and let's just say you make a request. Now, I'm not going to go through actually how the internet works, uh, how you're sending a request to the internet and how it's coming back to you. But quite simply, what I'm going to abbreviate it as is you're sending a request for Google.com. Oh, sorry, Google.com to this internet and the internet is coming back with you with some response with some HTML and that is being displayed on your web browser uh, but there's a small problem here so when you load a website on your web browser you probably notice that hey like uh, the, the thing doesn't just freeze up or at least hopefully. Uh, what happens is it shows a little loading indicator, like in Google Chrome, it shows that little you know spinning circle, uh, and it just spins, spins, spins until you actually get the result on screen. It, uh, the UI doesn't just freeze up, and that's called using an asynchronous task. In fact, let me explain this in a bit more detail. Now, what's happening is inside of your computer, you've actually got these things called threads. So you've got this, let's just say CPU, all right? You've got this nice little process. And the processor has, let's just say, four cores, okay? Uh, now, sometimes some processors can do things do things like hyper-threading, which will make this, you know, simulate eight cores. And then each core could have two threads, meaning it would have 16 threads. Uh, and so, what would happen is, let's just say, for the sake of simplicity, you've got three threads on your computer. Although you've probably got many, many, many more. Uh, so, what we can actually do is we can draw a little graph here. This is our execution time as we go along here. This is like a few milliseconds increasing, increasing, increasing. Uh, and then over here we've got our threads. Okay, so this is these are our threads. These this is our execution. Now, again, I'm just going to draw three threads and, you know, continuous execution. But then again, as I said, you probably have many more threads. So now, that one, let's just say this is our main thread, okay? In fact, you can actually call this your UI thread. Now, the reason it's called your UI thread is because this is actually, uh, this thread is basically like a big string, okay? And this string basically allows for the execution of UI tasks. For example, when you see a button on screen, and when you click on the button and some, something shows up, all of those tasks are being handled in the main thread. All that code is being run in thread number one. And so what's happening is that's allowing you to see what's happening on screen. And it's the main thread process. So, like, for example, what this means is let's just say, um, you stop the thread 
over here, and you do something that'll, you do an operation that'll take, let's say, three seconds to complete. What'll happen is you'll have this little block here, this three second block in execution, one, two, three, and during those three seconds, since the UI can't be updated, your UI will kind of freeze. Whatever was loading, whatever was animating will stop, and it just will absolutely freeze. Because for those three seconds, you're running an operation that's taking three seconds and not allowing the UI to continue and be executed. But once that three second block is over, the execution will continue like normal. But as you can imagine, that's not a very good user experience at all. And let's just say that this three second you know, wait was accessing a REST API, for example. Going to the internet, waiting for the server to respond, etc, etc, etc. That would take, let's just say, three to four seconds, maybe five. And that is a block on the UI thread, meaning you cannot display any animation saying that, hey, wait, I'm getting a result. Uh, your users might think that, hey, the application's frozen, force quit it. Uh, if the internet takes too long to load, for example, it'll just be absolutely frozen, you won't be able to use it, and it's just generally not a good user experience, uh, and it's not a good experience for you either. Okay, uh, and so this is where multi-threading comes in. And so basically the point of asynchronous tasks is to delegate long-running operations off of the main UI thread and onto a background thread. Uh, and so basically what we can say is number two and three threads here are things called background threads. They're threads that the UI doesn't run on, meaning that by default there's not anything running on them, and that also means that, well, if you were to run something long running on thread number two, number one would just keep going on in terms of execution, and number one would not be affected. Let's actually take a look at that. So, basically the point here is we've got this execution. Okay, so we're, we've got this UI nice, nicely going. Uh, and then, out of nowhere, we need to run something called a long running operation. Let's say a call to Watson. What we're gonna do is we are going to branch off from this thread onto thread number two. And we're going to put our long running operation and block this thread. However, Thread number one can keep going without any interruptions. And what this means is while thread number two is held up for 10, 20 seconds, really however long, your UI continues to animate, your UI continues to be drawn, uh, and you can continue to do any short running operations without your users believing that your application is completely frozen. That's a big advantage. In fact, what happens is let's just say uh, you're done here, okay? Uh, you're done with this operation, what happens is you basically merge back in to your older thread number one. All right. Uh, or, I mean, I guess you could say uh, a more realistic sense here uh, would be that this thread just basically ends. Okay, so it basically ends here. But what happens is, just as it ends, There'll be a little, I guess you could say, block over here. All right, and this will run some code that was supposed to be run after thread number two's work is done. Now, the reason this becomes so convenient is what happens is, okay, so you've got thread number one calling Watson branches off into thread number two. Thread number two does the long running operation, UI is still completely perfect. Y thread number two branch like just hops back into number one, changes the UI. However, displays the result of the web call, displays really whatever it needs to, displays a message, does something on that UI thread, and then continues like normal on thread one, whatever you would usually do. And this here is something called a short running operation, uh, and so it's not very long. It's basically just taking whatever the result was of that long running operation uh, and basically displaying it on the UI or doing something small with it, like adding the adding stuff together or parsing JSON or something of that sort that doesn't really take too long and won't freeze up your UI for like 10 seconds. So you so your users are very very happy with that. In fact, what's completely possible is actually branching back and forth between background UI, background UI. 
So let's just say, for example, we continue this thing here. We continue thread number one on and on and on and on. What can happen is we basically um, branch back into uh, thread number one from thread number two, and then we take this and we basically continue as if we never stopped. And what we can do is we can essentially do a long running operation. We can branch back in, display something on the UI, do something while we pause our long running operation thread that continue with something else that's a long running operation, for example. And then continue and continue and continue until you are finally done and you can merge back in to your first UI thread. In fact, another thing that's really interesting here is that you can actually run background threads from background threads. So like for example, I could then, once this is done, once we've returned back from our UI thread, I can then spawn another thread. Okay, and this could do another long running operation. And then this thing could come back, or it could just end and I could continue with my second thread. But then again, there's another thing you could do where, for example, instead of having uh, for the uh, second thread wait for the third thread, you could have the background thread do something in the background for your background thread. What this means uh, is basically we would have this still of course going, oh uh, sorry Bob, not supposed to come here, uh, but we could still have this going on while this continues and then we could of course have thread number three branch into thread number two again and continue like so. Now this might seem a little bit complicated, but basically the point is that what's happening is let's say you want to run something that'll take some time. Instead of freezing up your application by stopping this thread from executing, we just delegate that work to a different thread. Then you just don't run any code on here and just wait naturally for this thread to respond back here, give you your updates and continue from there. In fact, I've actually used this in a number of my applications. However, I usually like to go for synchronous tasks that usually just block the UI for the sake of simplicity to show you how the actual REST API itself works. However, you will be seeing a few examples of this in the description below. That's right, in the description below I'm going to attach a few examples of applications uh, that can use this type of asynchronous, uh, asynchronous behavior. Uh, and those will be uh, in Node.js, uh, Swift, and maybe some Python as well. Uh, in fact, I guess you could say not just the execution, this is the execution time. Uh, so this is the time that it takes to execute, and this is, you know, over time you're executing these actions. Uh, and of course we can just continue, 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 uh, use as many threads as you'd like. And just the logic seems a little bit complicated, but once you see the examples in the description below, this should be much, much clearer to you. All right, so that's actually going to be it for this short tutorial today. Of course, I really do hope it helped you and helped Prashant as well. Uh, so of course, though, that's going to be it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please do make sure to like the video down below. And if you believe it could help anybody else you know, like your friends or family, uh, please do consider sharing the video as well. Of course, if you have any suggestions, feedback, or even questions, leave them down in the comment section below. Email them to me at tajimani.gmail.com or even tweet them to me at tajimani. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. But just before I go today, of course, if you really like my content and you want to see a lot more of it, please do consider subscribing to my channel as, uh, channel as well, as it really does help out a lot. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I do release new content, then please sure to be, uh, please sure, um, please make sure to turn on notifications as well. All right, thank you very much for watching today. That's going to be it for this tutorial. Goodbye.